Hello and welcome to Front and Square, your exclusive look into the inner sanctum of the AFL. Today's guest is Dennis Paikin, 140 games as a player and 340 as a coach. Topics on the agenda, some of the great players, some of the worst players, his time at Stockdale and Lego here in Essendon and the return of Pagan's Paddock. Well Dennis, you're more interested in uh, real estate bubbles than St Kilda's bubble these days. Um, where does life find you? Um, I purchased a real estate franchise with my son. I went back to school and got my full licence and uh, uh, trying to get as much experience in the shortest uh, possible time as I can. Um, I think my son's probably one of the best listers and sellers, and we've set all the systems up. Got a very good property management department now. Um, we've got it, and uh, you know Ryan just lists everything, so and we need someone to give him a hand. You're always one of the best talkers around in footy, Dennis. Are you out there uh, auctioning homes off at the moment? We've got, we've got the best auctioneer in the in the in the district, I reckon. I've done the auctioneer's course, and I'm waiting for him to do a, a Murray Kirby and, and fall over, and I'll jump in. How do you think Sheeds is going to go? The old adversary you know, going into GWS, massive challenge. He's a he, he's a marvel, Mark. He, nothing would surprise me. I spoke to him, or well, it might have been three or four months ago. He hasn't uh, he hasn't lost any of his keenness and passion, enthusiasm for the game. He's got good people around him. He'll sell the club well, and uh, he'll be good for uh, Greater Western Sydney. I think Wayne Bennett's uh, 61, just signed a new four-year deal. Um, we are ageist in this community, aren't we? Oh, there's no doubt about that, but that's that, that's that'll all change, like like game plans and styles. And you look in the UK with with, with the English Premier League coaches; they're all in their middle sixties. A lot of them are, even in the states with the gridiron coaches. But look, you just you just you just play the cards you're dealt, move on, and do what you want to do. It is a it is a wide generation uh, world at the moment, but that'll change. How do you see the director of coaching sort of set up? Could you imagine yourself sitting next to a Bucks or an understudy? And how do you think Mick's going to go sitting in an office next door? That well, I've always been a great believer that uh, um, two bulls in the one paddock never works. And I'll be interested to see how it all goes. When looking back at Carlton, it was a tough ask to come in when they had the draft pick stripped away. Had you known that was going to happen, would you have jumped over? Look, uh, it was an unusual scenario at the Kangaroos. I'd run my time and they made me a godfather offer that um, they couldn't accept and um, just all fell into place and uh, it wasn't about money. I think it was uh, the Kangaroos, my last year in my contract, the Kangaroos, 25 grand more than what Carlton paid me. So it was never about money. But I went to Carlton and you know, I knew that it was always gonna be a 10 year turnaround. Um, probably the best, the best lesson I've learned in life and I reckon it's a real weakness with um, the Australian culture. Accept responsibilities for your own actions. No excuses, no regrets, no alibis. Don't point the finger, don't blame anybody else. And I've stuck by that, and I reckon you're better off doing that. I've been potted by a few, but sometimes you feel like having a crack back, but just think of that. And that was some, something Ron Barassi imparted on me many, many years ago. You must have been flat the night the draft picks got taken away, though. We were flat as a piece we were. <laughs> um, yeah, look, it was. When you see Goddard in the grand final last year, and you know Daniel Wells would have been handy. Um, you know, and they, look, they, they were that close, Carlton, to uh, handing the keys back in. So they had nothing. Yeah. You know, I still remember... Um, trying to recruit blokes and saying, look, you've only got, you know, 40,000 to get blokes come across and money like that. Mm. But, you know. Kangaroos, where do you think they're at at the moment? Uh, a tough start to the year, off-field issues. Is Had, it sustainable, you know, with the model at the moment? If, 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 and look, I hear a lot of people say, um, you yeah, know, the Kangaroos, they should have gone to the Gold Coast, or the Kangaroos should go to Hobart. But if that happens, they're no kangaroos anymore. Yeah. <laughs> People forget that. There's no kangaroos. And if it's yeah. two games at Hobart, it becomes three, it becomes four. Well, exactly. It? That's what I'm concerned about. And that'll, that's, you can see it going to happen. And they'll be the, down there and then it'll be the um, you know, Tasmanian uh, kangaroos to the Tassie Tigers to, you know, and that's what'll happen. And, and you lose all that. And North Melbourne people are a special group. They've been able to fight. You go back right into early days when they came into the VFL in the 20s. You know, never got into the 25, never got into the um, 4 until 1945. Yeah. 20 years of a slog. Yeah. You know, it's uh, amazing stuff. So they're a unique club and there aren't a lot of unique unique clubs in the competition. I'll just swing back to Carlton, Brendan Favola. When you look back at your time there, and do you, do you think Carlton could have done anything differently or was it inevitable that it was going to get to this stage? There's one thing you need if you're going to be successful or build a football team, that's talent. There wasn't a lot of talent, Carlton. <laughs> um, he was a long way ahead of what you had, really. Exactly. 
exactly. We never had anyone who could kick nine goals in a game or kick 90 for the year um, and not getting in as much as the other side. So that was the first thing you did when you arrived, basically, is tap Brendan on the shoulder and say, look, you're part of the future here, we need Well, we had to. We had nothing else. And look, it was, it was, it was tough in those days because everyone was under pressure. You came in, you know, players were forced to take cuts. Um, you know, we, we delisted something like 15. Mates had gone. Um, you know, you had, uh, um, you know, people bagging before you'd even started. And disunity. And I still can't understand how football clubs can, can allow their organisations to be fractured. And the ones who were successful, could you imagine someone jumping out of line, whinging a moan with Eddie? He'd say, pull your head in. Yeah. Could you imagine uh, uh, Brian Cook down at Geelong? They'd, they'd say, pull your head in. Even Jeff Kennett. So it's, it's not, it's, again, it's not rocket science. Mm. If, you, if you've got a fractured club, everyone's wasting their time. You've got to be on the same agenda. How do we make sure that coaches who have tough times in the last few years are celebrated for the entirety of their career rather than the likes of Tim Watson who, who scarcely talks about his coaching career? How do we um, celebrate coaches for the entirety well, of their I think, I think coaches are big boys. There's only two sorts of coaches, those sacked and those to be sacked. You go on with your eyes open. Um, you know, it, everything I touched for the first 25 years of my coach had turned to goal. The last four and a half years um, turned to cow manure. Um, does that mean I can't coach? A lot of people say that, <laughs> and you're you're out on your ear, and you think mm. you're uh, you know you're going for all money. Do you believe in mental fatigue? You guys lost in '98, but won in '99, driven by that, but never lost two in a row. Yeah, I don't think it was mental fatigue. I think we got it a little bit in front of ourselves. Yeah. Uh, we were the best side in '98, kicked six fifteen to half time, and uh, I can remember still coming in the rooms. Everyone was yelling and cheering, and thought, oh geez, yeah. I asked them to be quiet and. We just, I still have nightmares about uh, Andrew McLeod and Darren Jarman bouncing the ball, running through the midfield. Uh, 